the Awakening Word brought to you by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi, the president of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated and overseer of the Redemption Faith Churches. So when I say to you most time, nothing encourages a man like answers to prayer. It's an amazing truth. And I'm sure today you will experience answers to prayer. Reverend Ajitomobi is called by God with a mandate to reach the unreached at all costs and reawaken the church to our responsibilities. Every gallow the enemy have set up, by the word of God today, they will go into the same pits. Be blessed. Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. Let's read. Let the people praise thee O God let all the people how many people let all the people praise thee verse 6 then shall the earth yield her increase and God even our own God shall bless us verse 7 God shall bless us and all the end of the earth shall fear him. May God lift you in a fearful manner. May your increase, your blessing be traceable to God. May men conclude that the Lord has helped you. The Lord has blessed you. And the Lord has established you. What is small and is good in your hand, may they grow great. What is big and is not good in your life, may they drop die. Let the people praise thee, O God. Reasons. Reason number one to praise him is a proof of acknowledging God in your life performance. When you praise him, you demonstrate a proof that God is the proof. You are acknowledging God in your life performance. So if you take God out of me, I am stranded because there is a limit to human skill. Let the people praise God. Why? In giving him thanks and praising him, you draw attention to God as the source of your strength because it is what you have that you worship and what you believe in. So when you start praising him, you say, ah, so this is the secret of this man. God is the source of his strength. See the way he's praising God out of order. Some of you, when it's time to praise God, you are still very organized. Let the people praise thee, O oh God. Why? Number three. Because thanking him or praising him provokes God to do more. Even as human, when a man is so grateful to you and praises you for what you have done, you would like to do more. Let the people praise you, O oh God. Why? When men praise him, he will not only be provoked to do more, he will become the secure defense of their life. When you praise him, he will become your secure defense. And there's no time we need this defense like now, especially in our nation. Where every mistaken sound around you is taken for a gunshot and fear grips your heart. Have you had a mistaken sound around you and you run without looking back? You don't even ask yourself, where am I running to? You just keep running. That's how insecure our world has been. But when you are a great worshiper, you are a thankful Christian. There are many Christians so many of them are not thankful. In fact, at times they say to themselves, what did God do? Don't keep company with such people. Because sleeping and waking up is enough to thank him. Let the people praise you, O God. Why? 
Because thanksgiving or praising God magnifies what God has done and reduces the weight of your challenges. Who is singing? The guy who is here to pay his bills. But somehow, he made a choice to praise him, magnifying him in praises, reduces the weight of your challenges. Asu staff have not been paid. Bills have not been suspended. You still have to pay the bills. The pressure is mounting. You are always thinking of changing ideology and say, can they call up this strike? We're starving. If you choose to praise him, as you praise him, the weight of no salary will become light. In your praise and worship, somebody will supply the bread until the famine is over. May the non-payment of the ASUS staff build your faith in God for daily supply. Give us this day our daily bread. May this system, this challenge of ASU force every ASU university lecturer in the house force you to build faith for what kind of bread? Daily bread. Daily bread. Daily bread. If government won't pay monthly salary, God will pay daily salary. Can you trust him to that point? That's what praising him does. It magnifies God. He shows God's power to do what systems cannot do. Let the people praise you, O God, implies that you are praising him or thanking him to attract to God. To attract to God personal attention. Who is there dancing like that? What is he dancing for? How come he's dismissing everything around him? God says, okay. Is it not me you are dancing to? Is it not me you are praising? I will give you personal attention. Anybody in need of personal attention here? Praise him. Praise him. Let the people praise you, O oh God. Let them praise you. Why? Praising him compels more human helpers as instructed by God. When you are praising him, somebody think about you. And a telephone call can make a difference. A time of greeting can make a difference. It can just change everything. Now, it's not that person. That person is being compelled by God to do you good. You've done him no service. The only service you have done is a service of praising God. Is that okay? And then God says, since you are praising me and I know your state, he now speaks to somebody. That's the way it works. As a product of a life full of praises. Let the people praise you, oh God. Let them praise you. Let them give thanks to me. It said, then the earth shall bring forth. Did you read that? When you give him praise, your land will not be barren. Your business will not dry up. So if anybody is despising your present state, tell them, give me some time. Because the earth, the earth, which you labor upon, will no longer be barren. Even though you look like we need to pay you to say amen, but your land will not be barren. Amen. Let the people praise you, O God. Then the earth will give forth a fruit. The earth will submit to you. And then you will be blessed. And people will say that God has blessed you. By the grace of God, men will testify. 
praising him whichever way you can. A beautiful case study for me is the man David. Oh, may we be like him. Nehemiah 12, 46, make a reference to David. For in the days of David and Asaph of old, there were chief of the singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving were rendered to God. In your days, may you praise God. May there be a reference of testimony to you that said this man, he can preach until he praise God. He can do business until he praise God. He is a dancer. He is a worshiper. May that record speak for you. That when you wake up every morning, the first language in your mouth, Lord, I thank you. When you get to your office every morning, the first word in your mouth, Lord, I thank you. When you do a successful meeting, the first language in your mouth, Lord, I thank you. When you travel and you return home safely, the first thing you say is not, I am hungry. No, the first thing, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Are we going to have such people in this house? We will thank him at every opportunity. Somebody who didn't understand the ways of God said, what are you thanking God for, for the food he has provided? Just eat. So I said, I'm sorry, sir. People have eaten without praying and they got choked and died from table. Thank him, even for what you don't have. Anytime they sing that song, that particular phrase, I imagine David and Goliath. Say, Allah, Gbejai. They go fought for David. One little 17-year-old boy daring a giant. God must be between them. When you are thankful, David was a great worshiper, a man who praises God even when he was down. He still gave him praise. Don't say, what is it to thank God for in the Nigeria of today? What is it? This country is finished, but you are still there. It shows the country is not finished. It's our troublers that God will finish. Yeah. It's those who wants to scatter our country that we sleep and will not wake up. Yeah. Because God needs to fight the battle for Nigeria. The soul of this nation is on a crossroad. God needs to arise and fight for our nation. So that God will stand between us. And our troublers. When you thank him, what is left will grow. There was scarcity, there was no supply line. Everybody over 5,000 men looked stranded without counting women and children. But there was something little, not, uh, not sufficient, something little, not sufficient, something little, not sufficient. Five loaves and two fishes. Jesus took it and gave thanks. He didn't give complaint. He gave thanks. He didn't give complaint. He gave thanks. He didn't give complaint. May you learn to thank God for the little available. That is the secret to multiply it. He gave thanks. He didn't give complaint. He didn't say, how do you survive with this? That was not it. He gave thanks. He didn't give complaint. And he handed it over to his disciples and said, we have thanked God over this little bread. We have thanked God over these two fishes. Serve the brethren. Thank God. Thomas was not allowed to talk. He will have stopped the faith process. There are too many things God has started with you. You have killed midway with your mouth. Your mouth, your mouth. Very great move God has started. Say, what is this compared to other people? Once you compare yourself with other people, you become a foolish person. They that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. A wise person thank God for the little he has. 
when the little becomes great, he keeps thanking God for it. It doesn't say, I wish my home is like that home. Or I wish my husband is that man. It's a wish. It won't happen. Give him praise. But don't run into the mistake of not celebrating who you are and what God has done with you. Everybody has somebody ahead of him. Do you agree with that? You are also ahead of somebody. Is that true? Some other people are looking up to you. Is the way life is designed. So keep running your race. Keep growing your capacity. Keep making progress. But don't compare yourself with somebody else. Compare yourself with your purpose. Don't be lazy. Be hard working. Be focused. Be full of life and power. Let the people praise you. If they praise you, great things will happen by your life if you learn to praise them. I'd like to share with you a very hopeless and painful situation, yet people praise God. You see, you don't praise him when the weather is good all the time alone. In fact, your faith in God is more appreciated when you give him praise when the seasons are bad. That's why I counsel people. When you're in a bad mood, don't take a decision. What's my counsel? When you can't see things clearly, don't take a decision. When you have a dream and you forget your dream, don't crack your head. Let the dream go. If you need it, God will bring it back. Don't go praying and say, I had a dream. Pray, pray that you come back. Excuse me. There are not too many Daniels around that can go and recap your dream and interpretation. So if you have a dream and you forget it, leave it there. And keep praying and keep living your normal life. If you need that dream, it will come back. I've had some dreams that at times God said to me, do you know I brought this dream to you so, so years ago and you forgot? I brought it two years after and you forgot. I'm bringing it now. So I said, Lord, please let me write it down. I must not forget again. You see, God knows I needed that dream. Do you understand? Look at me. See God like a father. Who gains nothing keeping you in pain. See him as a father. Whose honor it is to see you do well. And he can boast about you to everybody. That's my son. That's my daughter. That's my this. That's my that. Relationship will help you. A man had died, buried for four days. They called Jesus in John 11 verse 41. They called Jesus. And Jesus showed up in the place. If Jesus was a Yoruba man, what would be his approach when he gets to the place? Oh God. Ah, ah. Now, wow. This life in no balance. It was one English I had recently. I've been saying it now. I asked the guy, what do you mean? He said, think too now. Look at it. Is it balanced? <laughs> Your own life will be balanced. <laughs> Jesus, in a very bad morning, painful circumstances stood before the grave and said Lord I thank you wow no wonder God couldn't hold back when you are thankful and you give him praise you commit him because God is attracted to grateful people I don't know your pains. I don't know what looks like dying around you. Give God praise today. Give him thanksgiving today. Dance before him as though that death situation is no longer there. And you will find out that God will undertake for you. He turns things around. What have I preached to you today? Let the people praise you, O oh God. Let them praise you. Then the earth will bring forth. So I began to share with you from the beginning. When you praise God, 
you draw attention to God as the source of your strength. Did you see that in your note? Number two, thanking him and praising him provoke God to do more. Hope you will do that today. Number three, when you praise him, he will become your source of secured defense. I'm telling you, nowhere is safe all over the world, not just Nigeria, but he will be your defense. I didn't hear you. He will be your defense. Praising God magnifies what God has done and reduces the weight of your challenges. So true. You are thanking God to attract what? Personal attention through God. Wow. It compels more human helpers as instructed by God, not as lobbied by you. Is that okay? As instructed by God. It compels more human helpers as instructed by God. When you give him praise, your life will not be barren. No business will die under the watch of a thankful businessman, a thankful career person, a thankful wife, a thankful husband, a thankful children. Nothing dies under such people. When you thank him, whatever you have left, whatever you have left will grow. Will grow. Yes. We trust that you've been blessed by this message preached by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated, Oloruru or Jo Ibadan. Or watch our services online via the Men of Isaka Vision Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can also listen to us on MIVradio.com. For inquiries, please call 0808-085-4818 or send an email to mivmandate2010 at gmail.com. God bless you.